Hello everyone, you asked for this and therefore it's going to be amazing. Yes, we have two chefs. We have three categories of tins. They will select a tin from each one of those categories and have to cook up a dish utilizing all three. Category one, protein, select your tin. Oh, he's gone quick on the funny shaped one. Well, I'm gonna go for the one that's got a language on it I don't understand. Exactly. Okay, excellent. Pick your fruit or veg tin. Oh, okay. You've got to utilize it, but not necessarily all of it. So the size yeah. of the tin isn't necessarily yeah. to your disadvantage. It's not about the size, it's how you use it, boys. And finally, your miscellaneous tin. That one looks interesting. I like consistency. Look, I, like I, see, I, like, I like lots of these, see? I, I like gaffer tape, so. <laughs> okay, can we have the big one? Right, let's find out what you got. What do you think you've got, Ebers? They look like they've come from inside of a shell, a sea mollusk, or maybe just a snail. It's Welks. Do you remember Calyx? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I believe he had these in some sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Quite chewy, I remember. Quite chewy. Mm. Remarkably sweet. Well, that's delicious. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. Okay. Very chewy. Kush, let's see what protein you are working with. Right. Oh. Do you want a digging thing as well? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's in jelly! <laughs> Can I guess what it is before you tell me? Please do. Right. Slightly fecal offal notes, porcine, it's quite a nice clarified jelly, and no seasoning, no salt. Is it head meat? This is lamb head and tongue meat. It's very gelatinous, it's in jelly. That's the tongue. Yeah. Let's find out what veg you're working with. Artichoke, hearts. Absolutely correct, Ebers. Oh. Goodness me, chef. They look like tiny little <gasps> gooseberry no, um... peas. What are you getting? Are they Thai aubergines? These are pea aubergines. Quite vegetal, <laughs> especially having them in can. <laughs> crunchy? <laughs> Not crunchy. Mushy. <laughs> but the skins are so fibrous, it would be nigh impossible to swallow without some form of liquid to help. Okay, well let's see if uh, category three can help you out, the miscellaneous. Oh no, what is that? <laughs> what colour is that? It's yellow. <laughs> I've gone from Welks to artichokes to a tin of soup or similar? Like a carrot soup. Carrot and coriander soup. Welks, artichokes and carrot and coriander soup. Yeah. Classic end of the week ingredients to use up in a single dish. Kush, what have you got? Is it I don't red know bean? What he's going to do. Oh no! Is it sweet though. Is it red bean? It's got multiple beans. Like what you put in the middle it of a steamed bun or something. It is red bean. Because you have rice porridge with mixed Chinese sweets. Those are going to be a struggle. I might have to get the big blender out. <laughs> if in doubt, blend out. Exactly. <laughs> right, boys. We'll give you five minutes to have a think about what you're going to do. Gather some equipment. And then we'll put forty minutes on the clock. Fab. I mean, ish. Okay, chefs. Start <laughs> cooking in three, two, one. <laughs> Right, first, eat one of those each, look down the camera and say what honestly what you think. So these are pea aubergines. Ooh. Oh, they're really bitter. I guess because they sat in a tin in their juice. Yeah. Really grassy aftertaste. I'm not good with offal <laughs> at all. I haven't seen Kush in a cooking environment like this freak out. Yeah, being so... <laughs> <bit> <laughs> The more you mash it, the more the smell comes out. Whereas Evers is almost gleefully skipping around <laughs> in the background, <laughs> just well, waving his carrot and coriander soup around. <laughs> I'm going to try and do something I've never made before, which yes! is always a risk in these things, but it's something that I had in Oaxaca, in Mexico. It was the best dish I had there, and it was sopa. So it's like a corn tortilla cake, and it was topped with an amazing octopus dish and some Ooh. seasonal vegetables. And I thought, can I try and do that? but with whelks instead of octopus. Other seasonal vegetable like artichokes, but I'll put the soup into the corn mix. So it's carrot and corn cakes. Nice, that sounds good. I like how he says that he's gonna try something that he's never cooked before. As if when we do these, we're just building off our own expertise and you know, with steak, <laughs> slaw. <laughs> Not all the time. So boys, what I've done is taken the carrot and coriander soup, added a bit of water, some parsley, some raw garlic, black pepper, and a good quantity of decent olive oil, and I'm gonna blend it. And that becomes the liquid that makes the masa mix. I can't get too close to the lamb, because I gag. So for me to be able to cook it and taste it, I need a mask flavor. Uh, I've got some curry leaves, ginger, garlic, and chilies, because they're left over from 
doing a, a dose of printer. If I make that spiced and crispy and then go sweet and velvety with the red bean congee and then make a sweet, bitter aubergine thingy to hide those, <laughs> You're hiding Literally two, hiding three tins in a dish <laughs> that you will not think is bad will be a win today. <laughs> Standard, most things are going to go into blenders and machines. I like your confidence, Kush. So that is flavour. Fry lamb off crispy, maybe take lamb out, then spice and fold it back through. Ha, <laughs> that's hot. I've used my carrot and coriander soup and what I've got myself is a corn dough that now needs to rest for about 15, 20 minutes before I can cook it. Is <laughs> it getting better as it cooks? Oh my goodness, it is, oh, that is really cat, like... really cat foody. Right, I've drained the... That is so funky. Where would the lamb head meat generally be used then? So, uh, lamb heads are used across the uh, Middle East, uh, Morocco. If you go to like the, the Market Square in Marrakesh, place is serving lamb head, gets it whole roasted with loads of soups and dips and salsas all Fresh. on the side, and loads of bread. So that's what I thought, Middle East. They use a lot of sweet and savoury in the Middle East. Just got a whiff of that. <laughs> <laughs> you sure that's not dog food? There's got to be some people in the comments who love lamb head, and I'd love to know how you have it and where it exists for you. I imagine with something like lamb head and the pea aubergines, that actually fresh, absolutely <coughs> delicious. Yeah, exactly. Not having sat in a tin for however long, marinating in its own funk. <laughs> I think I've settled on a dish. The flavours of India, the ingredients of the Middle East and Marrakesh and North Africa, with some Turkish chilli paste, some South American chilli paste as well. Wow. And an all of these countries, Asian crossover slaw. Yeah, all of these countries utilise meat, fat, and bread together. So, if I were to make you smoked scamorza quesadillas with like different kinds of chutneys and dips, would you be angry at me? Absolutely not. No. Oh, fine, then I'll, I'll try that. Are we both doing Mexican dishes? No. Sorry, I'm making. <laughs> you're doing, I'm you're making, doing a quesadilla. I'm making a cheesy parata. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm making a murtabak, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I yeah. like the fact that you're just throwing out so many options so they can save it in the edit. Whenever you plate something up, it'll work. No, 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 no. Keep all of this in. So boys, what I've done is I've taken some very, very finely sliced shallots, added a Mexican hot sauce for the chili element, lemon zest, parsley salt, and that's a little garnishy thing. The artichokes I'm going to pan fry in a really hot pan after these beautiful on the vine tomatoes have also seared off. And then I can worry about bloody whelks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also adding a little bit of panela to this. So it's a Mexican raw cane sugar to offset the acidity of the shallots. So I've gone with some sriracha and apple cider vinegar into this uh, radish and carrot. I'm not going to heat it up, leave it nice and textural and raw. I might throw some don't have any fresh herbs, that's that done. <laughs> uh, I've got some herbs over here if you want them, Chef. No, no, no. You go, you do you. Yeah, I've got all the French ones. I've got the tarragon, I've got rosemary I can offer you. I've got some bay leaves with some thyme. I wouldn't want you moaning, Chef. Oh, uh, I'll have a bay leaf, please. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. Oh, bay leaf. Oh, watch out. Oh, that's going to taste so much better now. What's going in there, Kush? So I've just put the red bean congee in it. I don't know why, though. Yes, red bean congee ketchup. Oh, like, oh. take the sweet and ca add more, so vinegar, really good. Oh, this is such a travesty. Beautiful aged Pedro Jimenez sherry vinegar. Uh, some tonkotsu sauce, because Jamie left over it. Yours is just throw enough stuff at the wall and it might cover up the stuff. Yes! <laughs> so that's really hot, really flavoursome. I need a bit of sugar in it, and then grated cheese. This is amazing. Just watching yeah. this happen. That might be done, boys. Oh. I think I'm going to put that into a bowl. Whoa! Whoa! Evans, little bit of warning. Nearly burn Aruna's eyebrows off. <laughs> Mine too. So I'm just trying to take the ingredients I was given in a tin and put them in a pan with a Mexican spin. So that was lemon and tequila around the artichokes, which will go with the Welks and the corn carrot sopper things. You've had 15 minutes. Kush, is that another piece of kitchen equipment? Mm. 
that you're using. So I'm combining burger cheese, which is have a lovely melting properties that doesn't split, with smoked scamorgia, which has that lovely smoky flavour. <laughs> so you're getting like a barbacoa charcoal flavour yeah. through the quesadilla, paratha murtabak. When I tasted the Welks, what I thought was salty, briny, but really quite sweet, just unnaturally chewy in that tin form. So I'm doing the chewing for you, boys. I'm masticating for you by basically chopping it all up on the board. What the heck is going on here? If you can cast your mind back to the day where we fooled Everill into eating baby food trifle, and we had that, uh, the chocolate concoction. Yeah, the pudding. I yep. have the same texture, <laughs> colour, everything in this pan. It tastes like a, uh, an aggressive ketchup. Ooh, an aggressive ketchup. Yes, because I had a sherry vinegar to it. Heinz! Wow. I don't know why I've been. Nice. An aggressive ketchup. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is pure and <laughs> incredibly German. <laughs> This is the pure, <laughs> pureed congee, hence the thickness from the rice and the bean. Yeah, yeah. Does it taste good? It, it different. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having an excellent Japanese salad with octopus and Asian pear. It was phenomenal. Now, I haven't got octopus, I've got whelk. And I haven't got pear, I've got apple. But they're kind of doing similar things, and that's why I think this dish could work. So apple and whelk, some sesame seeds, which I would always have thought of being like a uh, kind of Middle East tahini or even Southeast Asian and Japanese. However, sesame is a big ingredient, things like mole in Mexican as well, along with other seeds and nuts. So it should work here too. They're just full of seeds. Look at that is. Someone in the comments is going to say, oh, all Kush does is blend stuff, but... It's factually correct. I'm going to get rid of the texture by blending the PO machines and then passing it through a sieve. So I ended up with that lovely flavour and bitterness. Boys, I've shaped the first of my sopper, which is now going to be pan fried, just to see how it holds together, how it crisps up, how big I want it before I make the rest. Sometimes he cooks like that, and when I do that, it goes wrong. So we've got a uh, Coney Island hot dog uh, mayonnaise, and what I'm going to do now is balance it with the pureed pickled pea aubergine coulis. And we have a bittersweet, salty, fatty, Tangy mustard mayonnaise. You've got 15 minutes left. Okay, I feel like, how's your, I, I could need some fat on mine. And I feel like I might use the cheese that I have. <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking. He can only get away with that because I've known him so long. <laughs> right, <clears throat> these are going in. Now I'm happy with them. I'm changing my uh, pan. I'm changing my dish. What? God, with 10 minutes to go, he's changing. Look at the state of this. What do we spend our lives teaching the normals? Yes, but I do all the washing up here, so <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Remember whoa, these? Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 where are we going? The Coney Island hot dog mustard is taken out in a totally different direction. So still a quesadilla, Paratha Rolex, but without the eggs. Another country in there. Remember them? Ugandan Rolex? Yep. But I put all of this and put a hot dog in the middle of it and make a burrito. This, ma the, this is what happens when you don't give the man a tight brief. <laughs> when you say you can do anything with tins, this is what happens. This is what I want to see happen, though. Right, no, that won't cook well. <laughs> <laughs> if I uh, slice the sausage and lay it flat, yep. and do it like a flat stuffed pizza, yep. lamishin almost, because there's lamb in there. Oh, great. Cool, lamishin. Let's chuck another one. I in. think, by my current count, there's 48 countries you haven't yet mentioned. <clears throat> do you want to squeeze them in as well? So we've got feta mayonnaise, Mexican hot sauce, and a squeeze of lemon. Again, lime would probably be better. We, work, we roll with it. So I'm gonna put some lemon in the center, because when you eat like a calzone pizza um, pasty, like you want the flavor to be all encompassing and throughout. Mm -hmm. I've got a bottom, and I make a toppy with the rest of this mixture. Don't wanna waste it. Ebers, yours looks like it's coming together really nicely. It's taking shape. Kush's quesadilla is in.
Yeah. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Oven. And clean down. Boys, you've got a minute left and no one's in. They're doing the washing up whilst... No, 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 no. No, no, yeah. what's he got? He's got some Contro. He's making a margarita. He's making a margarita. Oh, a minute marg. So I'm going to shake a chilli over tequila, romagne, lemon juice, oh, and a little bit of honey. 30 seconds remaining. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Step away from your dishes. Well done, boys. Wow. Let's get these into the sexies and then we'll give them a try. Lovely work, chefs. I think you need to taste it all together. Cheers. Spicy. Something is warm. Really spicy. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. You threw some spice at that. You need that mayo. Yeah. Mm. The ketchup tastes like barbecue sauce. You put a lot of tonkatsu in it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes a little lamby, but you don't really taste much of the meat. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. there to hold all the other flavours. It's why a fatty unctuousness. Yeah. That's why I added the sausage, because you needed a bit more mm. snap and the, yeah. the smokiness. Yeah. The mirror, the smoked scamorgia. Sauces are lovely. Yeah, yeah. these are all three. That, of these that great. is fantastic, and you can genuinely taste the bitterness, but not any of the other bits yeah. of the P. aubergine. Yeah, that that blender saves me many many times. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, Ebers. Mm. Much like Kush, I managed to hide my protein, <laughs> the whelks, by chopping them up very fine. The corn cakes are great. They're yeah, lovely. Really good. Yeah, you've done really well there. <laughs> Thank you, <Jeff>. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely. Are you happy with that? Yeah. It's the first time I've made the um, the corn, the sopper, and I would definitely make it again, because once you've made it, and I like the addition of adding a flavour like the soup through it, you can then top it with whatever you like. It is the base and vehicle for whatever is seasonal and delicious. And your topping is actually really fresh and vibrant on that. If I had to pick a favourite, I'd choose Ebers. Although I thought that was amazing. I thought that was a delicious, fatty slop fest <laughs> that I really want to eat. Yeah. I felt this was a little bit more delicate. Things came through less intensively, but worked really well. That would be my opinion, but then what does that mean? I would have to go with Ebers. I think you actually showcased the ingredients rather than trying to hide them. But I do want to eat all of that. Yeah. It doesn't make it any less delicious because of it. I mean, it was uphill for both of you, but you just started further down the bottom of the hill. Yeah. yeah. Everest, I... you didn't do anything from the pool, actually, did you? So, no. Yeah, perfect. There you go. <laughs> I, I didn't want to showcase anything. <laughs> Well, as always, comment down below. Did you have a favourite? Did you have a favourite process? Let us know in the comments <laughs> down below. We will read them. And if you want to see another one of these happen again and have some great tinned ingredients that you want us to mystify, let us know and give the video a like. We can do it. Well done, lads. Nice well done. Great job. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>